It's Halloween. Lots and lots of candy, kids in costume, and lots and lots of orange. Happy Halloween, everybody. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Reese and I are excited. We're going to paint some pumpkins today. Way to go, buddy. Way to get into the spirit. I like them. Whoa, you outdid yourself. Pumpkin candy. I don't mind if I do. Mmm, <coughs> good stuff, buddy. Everybody give it up for my partner, Reese. And his head full of pumpkins. We're going to paint some pumpkins today, and this will be a chance to get out some of that orange that or at least most artists don't get to use very often. So I don't know exactly what I'm going to talk about today. It's just going to be a paint with me sort of a vlog. So come on, let's get busy. Well, I'm getting ready to do these fall pumpkins now. I kind of like the, the dynamics of the light. Very uh, dramatic. I took those pic the picture into Photoshop and kind of manipulated it. Got the angle and the values of the pumpkins a little more uh, contrasty and just kind of went with a nebulous background. But mine's not going to necessarily look like that. I'm just going to do something washy. Well, it looks like it might make for a cool painting and we'll see how it goes. Now all I'm doing here is I've already got a drawing down and I'm just going over some of the lines, sharpening them up. I'm going over the edge lines with a watercolor pencil um, to tone it with some color and this will more or less dissolve. And it's light enough that it probably, once I get color down, it'll uh, they'll disappear almost. And I'm gonna mask. I'm gonna use this mask pen, which uh, I've kind of featured in a couple other videos. Now, a lot of the details I have on here for highlighting are in the stem, and they're not all that fine. But I got to thinking, you know, this really could be used to apply even over some broader areas and I could go right from thin areas to broader areas so I'm going to give it a try. Other thing that seems to work is to just squirt out. If you need to cover a large area with this mask band, just squirt out a lot and then take, in this case I'm using a color shaper mask, uh, rubber tip color shaper, and just moving it around. So I've started the great adventure here of painting the background. Sometimes it's hard to say anything because this is where things start happening fast and you have to really react. And it's just it's just a matter of seeing something and saying, let me try this, let me try this. Watercolor really takes off and runs with the process here. And you can make quite a mess. But it's a fun mess. And sometimes you get into these situations and this is what I have to watch. It's possible to do too much and then it looks like it's been overworked. and starts to lose you know, some of his freshness and pizzazz. Just spritzing and dropping some clear water into these background here so I can get some intentional backgrounds and create a little texture there. Backgrounds are nothing more than great differentials in wetness. Usually it's when a wash has started to dry, it's damp, but it's almost dry, and then you go with a wash uh, with a large amount of water and it pushes that pigment back. That's usually the conditions that create a background. 
and I'm probably going to start doing this in glazes. Although I'm doing this into clear water so I can get some of these spidery things and when they as they come down I'll probably leave some of that look. I've never been much of an a la prima painter. Um, there's a term for you, huh? A la prima is just means I think all at once or all in one sitting. Um, I'm not real good at it. I just like to gradually bring, especially in the detailed areas, I like to gradually bring my values along. Well, there sure are a lot of artistic snobs out there. Y'all notice that? I don't want to be one of those. I'm, you know, there are very few absolutes in doing different forms of painting. Uh, where you can say this is the way to do it and there's no other way and if you don't do it this way you're just really not doing it right okay if it sounds like I'm saying that I'm not and it's probably just a lack of proper communication on my part what I'm usually trying to say if it sounds like that I'm just trying to say this is how I do it and how I have found the most success based on my experience because as soon as you say this is the way it's done and nobody else can do it better a different way, in walks somebody who does. I know that better than anybody. Just look out for, watch out for people who say this is the way to do it. Even if you're trying to learn to paint exactly the way they are, there's probably four or five or maybe a dozen paths to get to the place of painting like some artists that you, that you admire. There are definitely some things that work better than others. I don't mean to say that you can do absolutely anything you want, you know, and, and it'll always turn out the same. That's obviously not true and watercolor, you know, it has its distinctives and the whole idea behind Mind of Watercolor is not so much for me to show you a foolproof way to paint but more just to understand how watercolor acts and reacts so you can anticipate it and use it to your advantage. I almost didn't pay attention to my highlights here. You know that's a good example of a, an absolute that I can probably be pretty sure about. If you paint over your highlights, they're not going to be there. That's just physics. For the purposes of this video, I think that's going to be it for this time. That was a ton of fun to paint. I hope you enjoyed watching it. And uh, this has got me in a fall mood. So, on to the next thing. Well, that was a blast, guys. Let me tell you. Now, a couple of pointers that I forgot to mention while I was painting. If you want to try painting with orange, something that uses a lot of orange like a pumpkin, try to use something other than brown or black for your shadows. That'll just kind of muddy and kind of kill the orange. Try instead using some reds and some purples. Avoid using really heavy blue because blue will neutralize the orange and turn gray and muddy. So try the purples and the reds, maybe a red iron oxide make some pretty neat looking shadows. Likewise with the highlights, try not to just tint your orange. Instead, use yellow and you'll get a real lively change in color going from highlight to shadow. So give that a try. Have a great safe Halloween you guys. Meanwhile, Reese and I are gonna have a little more brain food. Thanks guys, hope you guys will subscribe and, and like this video if it was a help to you, if you enjoyed it. And we will see you next time.